Tani. I'm Justin. And we are the Campus Sustainable Transit team, which more specifically focuses on Campus uh, Bike Resource Hub, uh, the prototype as an answer to really solve a big challenge of ours that we'll get into in a minute. So just before we get going, um, very similar to the other presentations you've seen today, we're going to be talking a lot about the background of our challenge, introduce you into how we're ideating um, for our solution, talking about where we found requirements for a solution from our stakeholders, and then what our ultimate prototype was and our future steps. So first things first, um, biking on campus is just one of the many types of transportation you can engage with. Although Michigan isn't the biggest campus in the state of Michigan, which we'll talk about later, um, it does provide its own unique challenges to getting around. For me, I got a brand new job at the beginning of the school year all the way up on North Campus, but I live on South University. So not only did I live off campus, but I lived even further away from my job than I would be commuting from class. So. I was really excited about this job opportunity, but I realized that taking the bus would take over an hour and include 20 minutes of walking on a non-sidewalk road, which is great. Or um, I would have to go purchase a car, which I personally did not have the funds to do so at the time. Um, even Uber was inaccessible to me because of the same cost reason. So I grew up biking and I had heard a lot from A20 expanding their bike trails. And so I knew that road that I couldn't walk on was bike accessible. I had my own protected bike lane that I could bike up to my job with, but I didn't have a bike. So I went on to trusty Facebook marketplace. I found actually um, the oldest bike possible, apparently it's over 70 years old. Um, and I could tell that right away. I hopped on that bike. It was super heavy. The tires were flat. Um, actually the brakes broke as I was riding it for the first time. So fortunately I have some experience biking. I felt pretty confident in my skills, both riding in the country and in the city from my childhood. And so I felt like I could do this. This is a project I could tackle. Um, this is not $50 down the drain, like I initially thought. Um, so I ended up looking for a free bike repair opportunity just because I hadn't started my job yet. Again, remember, uh, financial constraints for myself. So I found Common Cycle. This is an Ann Arbor bike cooperative which means that it's run by volunteers and aims instead of giving out bike services, it wants to educate the community on bike maintenance. I really enjoyed this process. I was able to devote a lot of my own time. So they had exclusive hours on Sundays for repair time. So I could only go in between 11 and 2 p.m. once a week. But I was able to work directly with staff to learn more about how to maintain my bicycle and repair the damages that were done to it before I got it. Um, but this was a very, very long process. Also, it was on to me to go out into the community beyond campus to find bike resources that were affordable as well as accessible. And even then, the hours were restricted. So that made me think about why did I have to leave campus? What resources are available on campus to support my biking behavior? And why can't I find them right away? So I did some digging, and our whole team did as well. And so we found a few different things. A lot of things are centralized into the Planet Blue, which is a sustainability brand on campus. They have a resource toolkit. So on their online website, they broke uh, sustainability resources down into many different categories, one of them being bike maintenance and tips. So here you can see uh, a list of different resources and spread them out here. Um, there's pipe, uh, parking for bikes across campus, but not all of these were covered. So I was noticing my bike was getting rusty, just simply storing it on campus. I also have the opportunity to register my bicycle with DPSS, although um, they aren't necessarily able to deter theft. They can help um, me reclaim my bicycle if it is found because now I'm registered with my serial number. And then also I looked at these fix-it stands, right? So those hours for that um, bike cooperative were not open throughout the week. So I would go to these fix-it stands. The um, primary one is found at the Central Campus Transit Center, but the, a lot of the functions of the fix-it stand were broken. The air pump didn't work, so I couldn't fill up my tires. I wasn't really sure how to use the wrenches that were there, and they weren't the right sizes for the bolts on my bicycle. I understand my bike is super old, so that's where I thought that maybe I was meeting some of my own challenges. So I was kind of losing hope and losing my time. And so I thought, how about I rent a bike from campus, right? Um, my bike's super heavy. It's not great for the transportation needs that I have. But the rental program is on pause because of renovations happening at Elbow Field. So currently, I noticed that I was just getting redirected a lot. That's how I felt. I was being told to go to Common Cycle. I was being told to go to statewide resources online, but I wasn't getting the opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one help with someone on campus. Yeah, so you said bike camp campus is really difficult. Um, so we want to expand our research beyond just our experiences and the current campus. So I'd love to 
Just going over some of the images you generated, um, one of them would be the bike storage space. We just really consolidated the positives and the negatives that people um, found the prototype AI generated images to be. Um, we're definitely just going to consider the negatives moving forward and regenerating these images while keeping, like, one of the feedback, one of the feedback we received was that the pathways are too narrow and mm -hmm. as you see here, I'm always like, maybe one, maybe two people can fit through. We'll definitely keep that in mind when we're generating new images in order to show people this new prototype. And then I'll just go through each of the spaces we had AI generate. Next, we have the community center space because we just really want to create a community feeling on campus where you can get together with like minded people who maybe want to go bike on the weekends instead of staying in and studying. So, this is a really nice place that we just came up with. Another next place would be a bike pump and repair space, as we said. What are you going to do if it's not 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a Sunday and you can't go to common cycle to fix your bike, right? Here is a place where you can get those needs solved, as well as the next place with the repair bike workshop space, as Justin and me have emphasized. There, there are people receiving one-on-one -on -one service here. If you get past 
that man's neck. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But, you know, I don't know how, how late that's going to be on the fact. But one of the things we're really emphasizing is getting enough volunteers and making sure this place is well staffed in order for you to receive that one on one support and fixing mm -hmm. your bike. Last but not least, we have the outdoor pop up events, which might just occur everywhere on campus. This is just going to bring attention to our bike resource hub and biking on campus in general. We'll provide infographics as seen in this picture for our new bikers or people just looking to get more resources on campus. However, this we understand this might be a little more overwhelming, so we'll try to keep the newly generated images a little bit simpler for the future. But yeah, those are the events for the pictures we generated and we're going to go over next steps. So we want to use this feedback that we got from our initial images and create new ones that people can also give us feedback on and we can improve and learn for the future. We want to um, have a pilot study titled Diary of a Biker, where we have students and faculty volunteers actually use a bike for a week or two and record any um, feedback they have or frustrations while they're riding. So we can really understand the feelings that people have when they're biking and any inconveniences they face. Also, what are people around them reacting? Like how are they reacting to um, people who are biking? Um, so uh, the Adventure Leadership Office actually already has leftover blue bikes from the past rental programs they used to offer. Um, so this would essentially be a no cost, um, no cost study that we can uh, implement in the future. We would also like to have a website that would have uh, a singular digital um, collection of all the images that we have, uh, the new generated images with feedback, um, as well as a form that people can list their emails on to receive updates on our progress and our, um, any future tabling events we might host. Um, we'd also like to partner with Common Cycle and possibly MSU Bikes to have um, like die tabling events to increase attention for our initiative to both non-bikers and bikers alike on campus. And we'd also like to pilot repair toolkit rentals, um, which would be more sensitive if we had a bike resource hub. Um, but for now, just kind of seeing if people find like small kits useful, um, the Ann Arbor Public Library already offers um, these toolkits. And the ultimate goal is to finalize design of our hub, distribute resources and evaluate the demand from them, and make a comprehensive uh, recommendation to university administrative bodies. I guess we all can but I can go first. Um, I know I was really surprised by how engaged Common Cycle was with me as a student. Um, I went into that space. Uh, I had a cooperative back home, and so that's how I knew what to look for. It's called the Bike Library, back where I'm from. So um, it was really nice, and they're a super big community there. And I, I wasn't really expecting that. I wasn't expecting the bike culture to be as strong as something that I had grown up with, just because I thought that it came naturally, because my dad was in the bike community, therefore I was kind of ushered into it. But it was really, really surprising, but nice to see the fact that people within the Ann Arbor bike culture are really excited to bring new people in. And not only that, are always looking for ways to make their space more accessible. I remember in every conversation I had with them, they're like, I'm so sorry, our hours are only on Sundays. Like, you should really come to these repair um, long-term like workshops that we have throughout the semester mm -hmm. and things like that. So it was really nice to see that they were really compassionate um, and excited about the opportunity to span resources on campus, just because I thought that was something that would be like a market competition or that the community would be exclusive, but neither of those things were true. Um, it sounds like MSU has a little bit of a different approach to biking on campus. What factors do you think went into that difference? Is it like the layout of our campus versus theirs? Is it just resources? What do you think makes that difference? Um, yeah, that's a good question. MSU bikes started like quite a while back. Um, there was like just activists within their like, university body that really advocated for um, a bike club on campus. Um, so I talked to Tim Potter and he had said that there actually was a lot of initial pushback from the logistics parking group mm -hmm. because like it's kind of different how our university is structured. Like we are LTDM, logistics transportation. Um, but they're like they they don't actually like bikes because um, they make money from like parking, whereas Ann Arbor is a lot more congested and like 
we want less people to be driving. Um, so that was interesting to kind of learn about the structure. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if that answers your question. It does, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll also say that um, MSU Bikes really inspired us to think more about how we can incorporate um, our rental system into bike resource work and centralizing the resources on campus. Um, and we, again, maybe another surprise is we got a lot of support from the rec department um, from John Sorlo, and he was like, you can take these bikes, you can take this rental system <laughs> over. And I think that was something that um, really was a large change from our initial idea of just providing the resources and repair and thinking about how this could really centralize any bike community on campus um, by being both a rental and a repair program. Um, I can try to answer. I mean, ideally, we're looking to basically have like a free rental service for you <laughs> as long as you return it in like your allotted time of like one semester, or even if you just want to rent it for the weekend, uh, it would be free. And then additionally, perhaps having like an option for students to purchase bikes as well. That's something we talked about a lot, actually, because a lot of the just models we're seeing in California have like the labor costs. Also, I think MSU has a labor cost system, so mm -hmm. the repairs aren't free because it's more of a service than it is an educational opportunity. So again, like thinking about, you know, would people want to engage with that educational opportunity? Is that like the conceptual cost versus the physical cost of making someone pay for a service? So there's that's something that I guess we'll really try to explore in our next few stages as we compare the different models across uh, the nation. And also we were thinking about how Michigan is such a cold place in the winter <laughs> and that just naturally deters biking. I did a winter bike maintenance project before this semester and a lot of the feedback I got was simply like, no matter what my behavior won't change simply because of the climate. So I was thinking about, okay, how can we alleviate those costs if those half the semester you're not actually using that bike? You know, like what, what are the real logistics of that kind of circumstance? I, I talked about the um, accessibility of like the solutions. So I'll answer this question. We're still kind of early in like the stage of developing, like you know, right now we're just thinking of providing bikes, but you know, ideally we would have access to like electric bikes and bikes with like what is that called? Like, a little box to put like groceries uh, yeah. in. The best. Yeah, yeah. Say, oh, that's <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so things like that, and then as far as like. The building being accessible, I think I had on the sides of like gender inclusive bathrooms and like the community space, and also just like ultimately building more of like a community space for people beyond just like, you know, uh, oh my god, why am I not thinking of any words? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, it, I don't want it to like you walk in and it feels like a factory and it's just like oil and like, tools everywhere. It's more, it's like, like it's more welcoming, you know, we don't want like, uh, I think. Someone we talked to was like, it's not just a space full of like straight white men. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah. 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 Well, I think you had a question. Yeah, I have, I have a couple comments from the office. They talked a little bit about that there was kind of a bike resource before. I think that was the case. Think about having mm -hmm. a bike and having to go upstairs or downstairs or in an elevator to do that. Um, also, I love the idea of three bikes per semester, but think about also if they're using that bike all throughout the semester, something might happen, and so you could also like bundle it, maybe like volunteer time for the semester okay. and a little bit of a trade off, mm -hmm. and then that helps kind of the community and helps bring their bikes in to try to 
shop or people would just come in and hang out. And so we finally just like built a cafe and see. So they could talk about life and then it became like um like different programming. So I'm curious if you have any ideas about like what kind of programming that you want to see in a space right now. I can have some idea um, Google 500 is the largest collegiate <laughs> bike race in IU, and that's coming up this weekend. So maybe like a huge student watch party for like big bike events like that, triathlons potentially, um, because people did say that TVs are great to so awesome. watch students. Um, so that's an idea. I've, I've made them watch all my videos of what I went <laughs> the other day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that's a, I think that's something that Common Cycle as well as there's a Washington Alliance um, for bike bicycling. Um, that's something where we really want to hone in on how this would impact the community as well as the planet, right? So you have the opportunity and the resources to choose this more sustainable transportation, but that will shape the Ann Arbor um, uh, traffic flow, like Alina was mentioning. And so there would be a reduction of cars on the road, but we want to increase safety. So a program that I was talking um, with Ian about I were at Common Cycle was the idea of like a buddy system. And so we really wanted this as a way to welcome people into the biking community that are currently cycling or are unconfident in their skills because if you're not confident, you're more likely to make bad decisions on the road, which decreases your own safety as well as those around you. You know, think about the diag. If you're unconfident biking through all those people, you're more likely to hit them. So um, uh, we talked about the idea of like larger group rides, but then he boiled it down just again to safety and thinking about how you could use a buddy system, ride with an experienced biker. This could be a volunteering opportunity as well for someone who met some, um, but kind of like would bike through campus and maybe even show them more directly their route between classes or just more generally mm -hmm. like, oh, here, like at this turn, these cars turning right never look. So just like at this turn, be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like, here's your hand signals is how you use it. So he talked a little bit about how like, they do kind of like safety demonstrations and presentations, but in reality, once you get someone out there with someone that can answer their questions as they come up and then give them that real life experience, um, that has a more potent impact than just sitting in a classroom and being like, go like this, go like that. Um, so yeah, really thinking about how we can foster community within those uh, buddy system programs and even expand beyond safety. Um, I could keep going about banking initiatives I've been a part of, but I know a great one I'm um, talking with Tracy over at Common Cycle about is incorporating it to other sustainability initiatives mm -hmm. on campus. For example, back in my hometown, um, we have a campus farm and every single year they have a harvest ride. So they ride from campus to that farm and back together. Mm -hmm. And so she mentioned the same idea for um, the harvest fest that we have on campus. So thinking again about like how can we incorporate biking into um, events that meet transportation demands, like a shuttle, like to get to the campus farm, you have to use a shuttle. So the like uh, farm ride would kind of be an example of building community mm -hmm. through programming. I also see David Thomas about this like real estate investment and like how you Even if you do like take the class and learn how to ride a bike, like 
having like a buddy, someone who's like still more experienced because there are like the people who have never learned how to ride a bike and the people who rode a bike like 15 years ago mm -hmm. and like they're not confident in their bike skills. So like taking mm -hmm. that consideration and like going to something. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I will also say, I think Alina came with the idea for the bike tire already. And we really want to use that as a way to not only get feedback from folks who are biking and be like, what would this rental system look like best for you? But more importantly, for folks who aren't familiar with biking, and this would be their first bike on campus, um, to kind of shape the groundwork of those program developments that Justin mentioned. You know, like um, based on their diary and qualitative answers, like what actually should we start to pursue and try for initial programming? If you're handy and you don't have like a drone, um, one of our ideas was a Franken bike workshop <laughs> where we might take like a band or like recycle bike parts and like teach you how to make your own bike over the course of a, a different. Workshops. Cool. I think that. Yeah. <laughs> that was something we got as a there was a big issue with people banning bikes on campus, and that was like a media comment from our stakeholders. Um, and then they were saying, like, how do we deal with that? So like using like you know, answering multiple problems on campus with programming that just cultivates community. I bike on campus, but also I me. So um, I will say that it definitely decreases. Um, but I was just like, there are some soldiers that bike on campus. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, like the biking does decrease. Like some people talked about was developing, I guess, less for like bike through the snow. So like when it's raining, have it like covered. Mm -hmm. Uh, bike parking spaces and things like that, as well as like offering courses on how to bike in poor weather. I think it's something that comes like a lot of, but you know, I like having that be part of the resource as well. We heard a lot about bikes. Not sure for Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I made a bike a winter bike maintenance guide. Um, that's kind of how kind of kick started my interest in this project. Um, but. Inherently, biking in poor conditions, like Justin mentioned, is dangerous. Um, and so it's kind of that balance between how do we really welcome and encourage people in the community, but also let newbies you know you can't see ice when you hit it until you hit it. And so um, it's something about how do you fall safely? Um, how do you get help? You know, things like that. So there's more logistics towards that end of things and thinking about how can we make sure every information we give out is tailored, you know, given that one-on-one -on -one connection, but at the same time, trying to reach as many people as possible. And so I think that's something we we'll continue to ask ourselves as we continue, um, especially as that fits into how we assess what resources are most accessible on campus. Okay, I'm gonna pause questions there. Thank you so much, team three. <laughs>